Hey everybody, I'm Nathan and I'm part of Studio Giblets. Ghibli Jabbly. And that's Giblets with a soft G as in giraffe. Today, Real Illusion has entrusted me with the task of discussing Cartoon Animator 5.1's latest features and to create a tutorial video so you might take advantage of them in your next production. We'll discuss three key features, the first of which is the Vector Character Launcher, which enables you to launch your vector characters to Adobe Illustrator to make small changes. Next, we'll talk about the new prop production pipeline that takes advantage of both Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. And then last, we'll take a look at how you can use GIF and APing files in your next cartoon. Let's begin with the new vector launcher. So if you look here, I've got two characters. Uh, one is a traditional character, uh, with just a G3 character, and the other, this little alien, is a vector character. And you can see if I make him bigger, he doesn't lose any quality. Whereas the traditional character, if you sort of blow this kind of character up, you make them bigger, uh, they start to go fuzzy. Now, just a point of review. You can take a traditional character into the character editor and then launch them to Photoshop to make any changes that you want. So for example, I will launch Jones here to Photoshop. Okay, so when I'm looking at Jones in Photoshop here, I look at him and I think something's not quite right. And I look at that pocket and I don't like the way that pocket and his jacket looks. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to make a change here in Photoshop. When I, after I finish coloring, I go back to the top, I save, and then when I exit out of Photoshop, it will automatically update in Cartoon Animator 5. In the past, you were only able to do this with these traditional characters. You couldn't do these with the new SVG characters. But now you can. To make a change to an SVG character, you're gonna to wanna to follow the same process. You're gonna take your character to the character composer, and then from there, you'll notice be, uh, below the Photoshop icon is an SVG editor icon, and you can click this to export your character to Adobe Illustrator. At the moment, the only SVG editor that's supported is Illustrator, but in the future that might change. Once your character is in Adobe Illustrator, you can make any changes just like you in Photoshop and then after you finish making your edits you'll click save exit and then it will automatically update in Cartoon Animator 5. It's a really handy tool if you want to make better use of SVG characters. So now it's time for some real fun. I made this little short about a toaster and I want to see if I can use Cartoon Animator 5.1's latest features to elevate the quality of this goofy little short using the new prop pipeline and the new pipeline for GIFs and APing files. Let's take a look at the new and improved prop pipeline. So for this little toaster short, I wanna add some fire. I think that can really make the background kinda of come alive. So I've got this series of sprites to emulate a flame. And now in the past, in the earlier versions of Cartoon Animator, to make a prop like this, to make fire or to make water, you'd have to bring your sprites into Cartoon Animator one by one manually. Now, however, you can bring them in all at once in a Photoshop document just like this. Now, to be able to bring them in all at once, you have to format them in the correct way. So the way you do this is you have a folder called sequence. That's the main folder. And then inside of that folder called sequence, you have the name of your prop action. So for example, I have here flame. And when I bring this into Cartoon Animator 5.1 in just a minute, uh, it will automatically bring in all of these sprites now you can have multiple animations in the same sprite. So for example, here, um, I've also got a blue flame and I'm gonna make this an animated option for this new prop. So to do that, to have multiple animations in one prop, you just create another folder with the name of the action. So for example, I have flame and blue flame. Now, the last step is to bring this Photoshop document into Cartoon Animator 5.1. You can just click and drag this document in and it will automatically generate your prop. And once it automatically generates its prop, you can right click the prop and then you will see the prop options and you can choose the animation sequence that you want. So you'll see here that it has two animation sequences, one for just the regular flame and then one for the blue flame. 
So just the key thing to remember here, the most important thing is that you have to format it the correct way in Photoshop. You have to format it with the folder called sequence, and then you have to put your next folder for the name of the action inside that first folder. Last, you can access the sprites in any given prop by clicking on the prop and then going to the sprite menu. And then here you can manually adjust your sprites or readjust the order. You can also make individual edits to your sprites in the character editor. You can export them to either Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, depending on if it is an SVG prop or a pixel prop. And then once you have it in Adobe Illustrator, you can make your changes just like in Photoshop click save, and then it will automatically update in Cartoon Animator 5. But wait, there's more. So I wasn't quite happy with how the toast falls over in this scene here. It's just got a three frame sequence. So I wanted to improve that. And I thought this would be a good place to test the SVG prop pipeline. So if you look here, I've got toast. I have uh, three keyframes of the toast falling over. And just like with Photoshop, the key here is the formatting in the Adobe Illustrator document. So let's look at how this is formatted. So first, the first layer here is named bread. This is the name of your prop. And then the next layer needs to be called sequence. Now with Illustrator, there is a slight difference between this and Photoshop you need to include a colon after sequence. Without this colon, it won't work. It won't generate your prop. And then after sequence, you have the name of your action. So for example, I have it named as bread falling over. And then one more layer down, you put your keyframes. And I have five, four, three, two, one here. And after you have everything formatted, you need to save as an SVG. Don't save it as an Adobe Illustrator file because this will not generate your prop. Save it as an SVG file and then you can bring that directly into Cartoon Animator 5. However, don't forget you need to use a colon after sequence. To help you remember this, I wrote a limerick, which will now be read by Cody. If a prop you wish to make, a colon you shouldn't forsake, Remember this tale and you shall not fail because of a foolish mistake. Now to help you remember not to use the colon when you're in Photoshop, I wrote a haiku, which will now be read by Phil. I'm just kidding, I didn't write any more poetry. Okay, one more thing to note here is that the order that the sprites will play is different in Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. So in Photoshop, it will play from the top down. So for example, you see here this flame, uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, it goes down. Whereas over here, the prop that I made in Adobe Illustrator is going to play from the bottom up. You see it goes from one, two, three, four, five with one being down at the bottom and five, the final sprite being at the top. So just remember with Photoshop, uh, your sprites will play from the top down. In Illustrator, they'll play from the bottom up. And here's one last way to take advantage of this new prop production pipeline. You can use this to create characters that have shaky line art. So for example, this ball here that I have in Illustrator, you can adjust the type of line and the line density uh, to sort of create that hand-drawn look. So for example, this ball, I changed the line art and then I'm gonna save each of these. And when I bring this into Cartoon Animator 5.1, you'll see I can get sort of uh, this shaky, hand-drawn cartoon look. And if this looks familiar, that's because it is. This is a technique that Studio Giblets pioneered with our short Mouse Bros. So last, let's take a look at the new GIF and APing compatibility features in Cartoon Animator 5.1. So if you look here, you can add GIFs to your animations. And this is the easiest of the three things we will cover today. All you need to do is drag your GIF or APing file into Cartoon Animator 5.1, and then you will get this pop-up menu. Here you choose whether you want the GIF or APing to play continuously, or you can set the number of times it will play. After you choose the number of times you want it to play, or just leave it on a loop, it will then be generated as a prop. 
So I thought the best way to make use of these GIFs would be to add a queue. So what I want to do is draw the viewer's eyes to the top right hand corner of this uh, frame right before Floppy pops out from behind the temple. Adding GIF and APing files to your animation is a cheap way to raise the production value because you can get GIFs for free. Your mom has probably sent you several. Now you'll find GIF and APing files all across the internet, uh, but all the ones that are featured in this video come from Avato, uh, but some other great resources would be something like Jiffy. Next, what's really cool about these is the GIFs that I'm using in this video, the butterflies, were not originally GIFs. These were actually uh, video files that I converted into GIFs for the purpose of this instructional video. So before I unveil our final animation here, I just want to point out a couple of cool things about Floppy. You'll notice that he has multiple sprites and this is what enables him to make this really cool turn. So this is a really cool technique that I've been working on to be able to give puppet animation a true 360 degree turn. So without further ado, I present Floppy's Obstacle Course. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial is valuable for you and that you are able to use these new features in Cartoon Animator 5.1 to make excellent cartoons. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll be hanging out in the comments at Studio Giblets to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.